This hour, I'd like to talk about diabetes. I went to medical school in 1970s, and there at that time, I've never seen diabetic. I've never met diabetic patients. But these days, I s meet a lot of diabetics. At that time, I, those medical doctors and we thought this diabetes is for the Westerners. Because Oriental countries around here were so poor, so we didn't know what diabetes is. But now there's no difference. However, Koreans get diabetes even more often. Obesity, uh, diabetes, hypertension, arterial sclerosis, those we call lifestyle disease. These we don't call these we don't call adult disease anymore because we can find this disease in twenties and thirties. So even young people get cancer, diabetes, and everything. So it doesn't actually happen. These disease doesn't happen because they're old. It's directly connected to their lifestyle. All different kinds of genes are turned off, and their gene sequence are changed, and that's why diabetes happens. Now one of the character of diabetes, they have sugar in the urine. Originally, normally, they are not supposed to have sugar in their urine. But when they have high blood glucose in their blood, then they have sugar in their blood. It levels up the density in their blood. Then you can get have dehydration if you have thick blood. You know the reason why those vegetables are fresh? Fresh vegetables, they have 100% moisture. You can even break it. We call those kind of vegetables very fresh. Now, let's say we don't give those vegetables, we don't water them anymore, then they got withered. Why? Because they're out of water. They don't have enough water. But let's say even the vegetable is very fresh, but then if we put some salt on it, now they are not fresh anymore. They are withered. Why? Because the water inside of the vegetables are coming out of the vegetables. So if we have high glucose in our blood, then those cells in our body, they lose water in them. So those cells are dried up, withered, when you have diabetes. Now those cells which are connected to the 
blood that they got dried up. So those white blood cells and white blood cells, they are in the bloodstream, so they have direct influence. Also, our blood vessel cells are influenced by this glucose. Capillaries as well. Now those capillaries got very weak because of that. And those bl uh, capillaries can be damaged easily. So when those capillaries are damaged, we have a lot of complication. Last time, I told you about the kidney. And there in the kidney, we saw the bundle of capillaries. And when you have diabetes, those capillaries got damaged. And you can have complication. So if you have high glucose in your blood, you can have that kind of complication as well in your kidney. Not only kidney problems, but you can also have with eye. You can also have problems with eye. Now that's your eyes, and those are capillaries in your eyes, and that's why you have reddish color there, because capillaries are well developed there. Now if we magnify this, that's the capillary. They're inside, they're those little red ones, those are the red blood cell. Now that is the normal. Diameter of the capillary is good enough for one red blood cell. But now look there, what happened to the capillaries? Now over there, that is normal, but here, it's kind of bumpy here. It means those capillaries are very weak, so when they are pressured, they become bumpy. You know, sometimes it can be popped. Then inside of those red blood cells can be popped out. And then your eyesight can be blurred because of that. So it can happen. If these kind of phenomena lasts, then your capillaries got thick, thicker and thicker, and then it changes your retina prob retinal area, and then you lose your sight, it damages your, your eyes, and you get lose your sight. So it can happen. So this is one of the complications of diabetes. And also when you are pricked by, the na by nails, like your feet or your hands, and because your cells got very weak, so they cannot really kill those germs. when you have diabetes because your white blood cells and red blood cells are very weak now those you know toe those toe that toe got pricked by the nail and now it couldn't get better so your actually feet got rotten it's damaged really bad that's pretty bad that happens when you can balance your glucose. So diabetes, the serious problems with diabetes are complications. Now, when you have a lot of high glucose in your blood, you have a problem, but also when you have less glucose, you have a problem. So you have a problem when you have hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. We need proper glucose. You know, everything actually in our body, we need to drink proper water, we need to breathe proper air, 
You know, oxygen is very important, let's say. But even though oxygen is very important, if we breathe more than what we want, then we have a problem. You know, we are not going to get better just because we eat something a lot. Well, the more the better is only one thing. You know what that is? That is the spark. Truth, goodness, the beauty, and love, faith, hope. Yeah, the more the better, of course. But that's kind of, you know, energy. But something we eat, something we take, like water, sunlight, air, whatever, what kind of nutrition, it doesn't matter. What kind of vitamins, it doesn't matter. Even though they're good, but you are not supposed to take them a lot. There's no such rules. Once Koreans, we took a lot of vitamin Cs. There are a lot of vitamins, right? Some vitamins are soluble. Some vitamins are insoluble. Vitamin C, by the way, is soluble vitamin. So if we have a lot, if we take a lot of vitamin Cs, we take it, you know, if we take it in our body, you know, it's soluble. So, you know, if we take too much, then it'll come out with our urine. But even so, if we take too much of vitamin Cs, we will have problems. Later we found out, though. So after that, people actually don't take too much of vitamin Cs anymore. Now, glucose is very important. Do you what is the most important thing to cars? Yes, gas. Gas is very important. Without gas, cars don't move. Without glucose, our body doesn't work. So glucose is our gas for our body. So you know glucose is very important. So when we have hypoglycemia, we cannot produce energy. So you know we can be, we cannot really, you know we can be sometimes very slow down. You know, gas goes into the car and it should be combusted. So, when the glucose comes to in our cells, you know, we have like engine in our body. We call that kind of engine in our body mitochondria. That is the cell, that's the nucleus, and there inside, chromosome and those red ones are mitochondria now this cell has eight mitochondria so this one we can say eight cylinder mitochondria the more cylinders you have you will have more power and you will make more, you will produce more energy. So when you take eight cylinder cars, you know, you will, it will use a lot of gas, but it is very powerful. So those of us, those who have a lot of mitochondria in the cell, they will produce a lot of energy. They have to take a lot of food as well. Now the numbers of these uh, mitochondria can be decreased and can be increased as well. You know, a uh, marathoner, athletes or marathoners, maybe they might they might have 24 cylinders. Me, I think uh, eight cylinder maybe. You know, like players, maybe they have like 12 or 16 cylinders. I think marathoners, 
have the most cylinders. Marathon, you know, they keep running, they keep running. That's why. Now, let's say one of those marathoners got in a car accident and, you know, he had to be hospitalized in the hospital for three months and he had to wear, you know, the cast. Then his 24 cylinders will become six cylinders. So, the number of mitochondria will be changed according to how much you exercise. It can be increased, it can be decreased. Now, by the way, this marathoner got well. Now he started to practice marathon. Then, you know, his cylinders will increase. 8, 12, and things like that. So if we don't move, if we don't exercise without knowing, you know, you will have disadvantage. Proper exercise is very important. Proper exercise is a must. To keep your eight cylinders to be eight cylinders, you have to practice. But you know, people don't exercise. Why? Because they don't see the change in them. That's the problem. If you start not if you start not to exercise, even though your cylinder has been changed, but then you don't know because you've never exercised before. If you start exercising, you might say, "Oh, this is very difficult. Oh, I can't even breathe." You know, things like that. It can happen. If you don't exercise, you will really you wouldn't realize the change. So exercise is necessity. Many people say exercise is good for our health, but actually that's not right. Exercise is not only good for health, but exercise is a necessity. People say exercise is good for our health. It means, you know, you know, you don't have to do it, but if you do it, you know, it'll help you. It doesn't mean like that. Exercise is a necessity. If you don't exercise, it will accelerate your aging process. So if you don't exercise, every function of your body will be decreased, will be down. Endorphin won't be produced, you'll, you know, you'll get depressed. And your, you know, sexually, your function will also be decreased. So exercise is a necessity. You must exercise every day. Proper exercise is very important. But if you exercise too much, of course, that's not good. You didn't really exercise today, right? Then you might say, ooh, it's a wonderful day. But if you didn't exercise in the morning today, then please exercise in the afternoon. You know, from there, I walked all the way here. I walked all the way around the mountain path, trail, and I, you know, came back to the center here this morning. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we walked together. <laughs> I had a good time. Yeah, she followed me. She wanted to exercise. I was very happy <laughs> to exercise. <laughs> you, know, you shouldn't say, oh, Sengni is exercising, that I should exercise. No, it's not like that. If you feel like you didn't exercise enough, you have to exercise. Oh, today we have no exercising session. Oh, that's wonderful. That you shouldn't think like this, you know? You know, you you need to take care of yourself, you know? So, you know, we have five stairs. I don't take the elevators. You know, I don't have enough time to exercise. But, you know, coming up this fifth floor, 
I l enjoy this exercising time. You know, when you take the elevator, you know, you need to wait for the op uh, door opening and door open and door close. But if you just, you know, keep walking, if you climbing up the steps from the first to the fifth floor, you know, that is your exercise. Your number of your mitochondria will be increased. That is really wonderful. Why don't you do it? I mean, you know, if you take the elevators from the third floor to the fifth floor, that is not new start, especially when you go down. Come on, coming down the steps is not that difficult. You know, save the energy. Of course, you know, you know, we can protect the environment and everything, you know, we have a lot of advantages. So please continue to exercise. Five stories, nothing. If it's more than seventh floor, then it's a little bit difficult. But I once tried the 24th story building. It was <laughs> difficult a little bit. Now these are mitochondrias. Now your glucose goes into this mitochondria. Okay, those black dots are my the glucose. Now through cell membrane, it's getting into mitochondria. It's there. And then you need oxygen. You need oxygen there. Now, glucose and oxygen. If those two things get into mitochondria, it is not going to be combusted. For example, you know there's a car engine. Now, even though there is oxygen, there are oxygen and gas, it's not going to be burned. They need to ignite. They need to start the engine. The moment he start the car, what happened? There's spark going on. You must have the spark to combust. Once there's one spark, do you know how much they burn? Only once. To keep burning, the spark must be going on. So when you once start the car, yeah, 3,000 times per minute, the spark gets in. Where When there's no spark, the car stops. Now, I explained this. Don't you wonder about something by now? Now, if this glucose is burning there, then this cell is producing heat, the heat, energy. Yeah, the, the, the cells got hotter. So when you touch your face, you know, it's warm. Why? Because in your cell, inside of mitochondria, your glucose is burning. So you have heat energy, and then there's power, and then electricity is also produced. All these three things we call energy. Energy is produced. Because those glucose is combusted, those energy is produced. You know, gas is glucose and engine is mitochondria. 
to combust, what do you need? You need the spark. Now, what is the spark for a man? What's the spark for a man? Exercise? Then you have to you have to shake the car to start the car. For electrical appliances, the spark is electricity. Now we are what? Yes, we are spark made machines. So we need the spark to start to combust. So the spark came in. Now the spark is the beauty, the goodness, and the beauty. So when you're depressed, it doesn't really burn. So when you're depressed, we say you're down. Then the spark doesn't come in, then you don't really burn, and then you're you're down, it means you're not that cheerful. You don't have power. Why? You don't have power. Why? Because they don't have combustion up there. So, you know, if it's totally out, if it doesn't burn at all, then you pass out. You're depressed, but then... You know, I took SAT when I was in school. There, you know, I took university tests. You know, every time the test has been changed. But anyways, at that time, I had to pass my paper test first. The ratio was 1 to 80. And then later it became one to four. But anyways, I had to pass the paper test first to get into medical university. At that time, I was staying at my aunt's house, and my uncle. My uncle was, you know, quite a authority at that time. So there are many people around at his house. Anyways, the day before the night, I couldn't sleep. At you know, at the time back in old time, those you know passing students, they were on the newspaper. Their names were on the newspaper. So next day, before I open the newspaper, I took the newspaper in the bathroom. Everybody was sleeping. I took the paper early <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> and I couldn't find my name on the newspaper. <laughs> and I was very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> I was very yeah. disappointed <laughs> because I couldn't <laughs> find my name on the paper. Oh, I failed the exam. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> and then later, <laughs> I got another newspaper. <laughs> you, you know? Donga Daily newspaper didn't have my name. They had um, kind of similar name with mine. My name is Lee Sang Ku, but then Donga Daily newspaper had E Sang Mun. At the time, they had Chinese characters on the newspaper. This is my uh, Chinese name, Ku, but Donga Daily newspaper had. This name, it was Moon. Uh. The first one is Ku, and the second one is Moon. So I was thinking, oh, I wish that Lee Sang Moon is Lee Sang Ku, which is me. Anyways, second time, second newspaper, I took different newspaper, different, different daily newspaper, and there, Another d strange guy <laughs> passed <laughs> the test. Now, this guy's name is Lee Sang Pil. <laughs> well, I'm not making up the stories, you know. I, this is the <laughs> true story. So there is no Lee Sang Moon. Now, there is Lee Sang Pil this time. 
Now, Lee Sang Pil was not in Tonga Daily newspaper. And then at that time, I was thinking, oh, this is it. It can be me as well. It doesn't have to be Lee Sang Pil or Lee Sang Moon. It can be Lee Sang Woo, which is me. Maybe this newspaper made a mistake. I had hope. Maybe they're confused with these Chinese characters. So I was waiting for the other newspaper then. And another newspaper came. And I was sh my hands were shaking. And there, there was no Lee Sang-moon. There was no Lee Sang-pil. But there was my name on the newspaper, Lee sang -woo. But then I wasn't so sure because now one of one of these three maybe will pass the test. Now I wasn't sure at that time. It was such a moment. But anyways, I could have hope. So after breakfast, my aunt said, did you pass the test? Auntie, this, these are the newspapers. Look, I have to go to the school and see with my eyes. So I went to school. And there was no Lee Sang Moon, there was no Lee Sang Pil, there was my name. Those Lee Sang Moon and Lee Sang Pil were my name. So I was happy, I was excited. I had hope. I was very cheerful. This is the spark. Do you understand? You know, we are spiritual beings. So when we have hope, when we have spiritual joy, when we have this truth, this beauty, thankfulness, you know, goodness and a true, when you have these kind of spiritual things, you can be satisfied. That's the nature of human beings. We are not the lumps of flesh. We have no value then. We have value when we become the lumps of meaning. We need to have faith in us. We need to have the goodness in us. We need to We need to show those beautiful things to other people. We can make people thankful. Then, you know, that will value that is more valuable something we can share then we are very happy that is the worth of men you know what the spark is the spark comes in to the mitochondria The spark is the truth, the goodness, and the beauty. Love, faith, hope. So, you know, those developed countries, those powerful countries, they are full of the truth, goodness, and the beauty. You know, France, Rome, there's so many beautiful things in their museums. Those powerful countries, Germany, full of beautiful music, full of beautiful paintings, are everywhere. You know, it means something. Those who don't have those kind of things are underdeveloped countries. You know, Africa, there's no you know war, but then... There's no art. There's no work of art. No composers, you know, things like that. You know, now in our country, in Korea, you know, we have, you know, those, some of very popular and famous singers. No, we think, you know, you know, we sometimes think, you know, food is better than art. But, you know, you know, we were underdeveloped countries then. So we need to seek the beauty. Seek the beauty. It's wonderful. You know, Koreans are very sensitive. 
in seeking the beauty. So, you know, so these days, a lot of, you know, Korean artists and Korean actors and actresses, you know, they are very famous in other countries, you know. So we are very, you know, those, you know, then we know that we are quite graceful in Eastern Asia. It doesn't look cheap, you know, it's very graceful. Our culture, our art, quite graceful. You know, when I lived in America, I sometimes visited Korea, and I was thinking, mm, looks so cheap. And especially when I see commercial on TV, oh, it looks so cheap, looks so cheesy. But when I, you know, watch commercials on TV, these days, sometimes they're even better than some of American commercials. You know, we make nice films, and, you know, they get a word, you know, things like that. So our culture are quite developed. Those are very valuable things. So those people who seek the beauty can live in the powerful country. They make powerful country. When you have fight for your disease, when you fight for your disease, please seek the beauty and settle down those beautiful things in your life. When I was in medical school, I was going to die. I was going to commit a suicide because I felt like this life is not worthwhile. This life is not worth to live. So I wanted to kill myself. You know, I was, you know, I graduated from Busan High School and I went up to go to medical school and I felt like I wanted to die because my pride got damaged. You know, in Busan area, my high school was very good. My high school was the best school in Busan area, my local area. But actually, when I went up to Seoul, capital city, my local area, I mean, there are not many people from my local area. And the hospitals, my seniors, they're all from like Seoul area, or the Gyeonggi area, I couldn't find my seniors from high school. I was the 15th batch from my high school, so, you know, I didn't have many seniors anyway. You know, at that time, my local area, Busan, was really country, country. But when I went up to Seoul, capital city, ooh, it was really different. You know, one of my friends from Gyeonggi area, which is very close to Seoul, he, you know, really liked me. You know, I really liked him too. So we, you know, became close. And he invited me to his house. I went to his house. His house was in somewhere around in Seoul area. You know, when I went to his house, I saw a gate. But at that time, in my local area, we didn't have that kind of house with the gate. You know, we had only the doorbell. <laughs> but then his house, my friend's house, I went up the stairs, you know, and there were rocks in the garden. And, you know, there was a <laughs> gate, and we, you know, ring the bell. You know, there is a house lady came inside, helper, and came out, oh, my prince, you came. So, you know, we, you know, walked along the garden. I was thinking, wow, garden. I've never seen a personal house which has a garden in it. And there is a water fountain. Ooh, must be very rich. So I went inside, ooh, and I saw wonderful living room. You know, my house was like I had two bathrooms, 
I mean, two bedrooms. We slept there, then we eat there, and then, you know, we live like that way in Busan, my local area. But then when I went to my friend's house, there was a living room. And there was a piano even. He went, uh, he went there and he started to play the piano. Ooh. <laughs> and then my pride got damaged so bad at that time. After I went to his house, I felt like I want to die. I really wanted to die. Oh my goodness. My life. Oh, I'm nothing. You know, that's how I felt. You know, after that, I was very negative. Why do I live? What is life? Do we just eat, sleep, and excrete? That's all. And I was very negative. Then, I'd rather die. And this, I ended up with this result. So, I decided to kill myself. Anyways, at that time, I really loved music. Uh, there is a place called Renaissance and called also Dolce, many, you know, music cafe and things. Oh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, at that time, Renaissance, you know, if you go to that music cafe, then, you know, you know something about music. You know, at that time, it was very difficult to listen to music even because we had this LP player. You know, that was very diff expensive, so we couldn't buy it. So, you know, we had to go to the music cafe. So we, you know, I went there, and I was very into music. I really loved music. I loved music. So when I listen to the music, while I listen to the music, that's heaven. You know, however, I was going to kill myself, but then I got a very severe cold. I felt like I'm dying. I felt like I was dying. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I didn't feel like dying. I didn't want to die. Just all of a sudden, I didn't feel like dying. I wanted to live. At that time, I was very confused. Hmm, I, I decided to die, I decided to kill myself, but then how come I want to live? Hmm, what a strange guy I am. According to the, all the situations, I, you know, am supposed to die. I thought that is the, rash, the most rational conclusion I could make. But then this irrational idea desire, which I want to live, you know, desire came up. I couldn't answer why I want to live, but then I didn't want to die. What is this? Of course, this ego who decided to die, that's me. Also, this ego who, who wants to live is also me. Then I found true ego and false ego. Now, which is the true ego? The one who doesn't want to die? The one who wants to die? Which is true ego? I was confused. So, I decided to postpone my suicidal attempt until I find out who true, who is true ego, who true ego is. I wanted to find out who true, who, which is real me. You 
You know, at that time, I was very honest with me. If I wasn't honest with me, I would feel, ah, oh, you such a coward. You know, you don't want to die. You such a coward. You know, but I didn't go up there, and that's why I didn't die. And I was thinking, why I didn't die then? I was deeply thinking about this. You know, I was listening to this radio, and sometimes I was listening to this radio, and at the time, one of the programs, you know, at the time, I was listening to this radio program, and this program sometimes um, ex introduces some letters from this person and that person, you know, and they say, you know, uh, why do I not have a boyfriend and a girlfriend? You know, they write letters to uh, the radio station. And sometimes this radio, you know, this program plays wonderful symphony, you know, music, and, you know. It's it's better than Korean. So when I listen to the music, oh, I feel like I'm I want to live. Why do I die? I love the music. I love the beauty. That was true ego. The true ego tried to save me. So I don't want to die, it means I still tried, I still seek the beauty, the spark. I didn't deny the spark 100%. I still kept the spark in me. I was 22 at that time. I was 22 at that time. I postponed this suicidal attempt, and I became 39. Now, I turned to 39. And 17 years later, I found out why I didn't want to die. God saved me. You know, I accept Jesus when I was 39, and everything cleared out. Now, if it's like this, then I will totally deny the voice of death. I will fill myself with the voice of life. And now, that's me. Now you see today. You see me today, here. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm really happy. Because I'm alive, people who are doomed to die can be alive, and those who are in hatred can forgive others. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Those are wonderful things. I'm happy to be alive. So if you get overcome your disease, you have to be like this. You know, you have to be like me. You know, you spread these wonderful things to other people. You know, he's a principal, vice principal. Now, he's very excited. She's very excited. They're very excited. They're very thrilled. Western medicine says, you know, you have no hope. So they couldn't even sit up. But then here, they can listen to my lecture. And they're not even tired, they said. Why? Because the spark is getting into their cells. And they're producing energy, and they're very strong and cheerful. Their complexion is really wonderful. She looked like... <laughs> she looked very dark. Her complexion was really dark. But then now, look at her face. It looks very nice. Your complexion is wonderful. 
Now, Western medicine, without the spark, they can even imagine this result. This is amazing. Those amazing things are happening here in New Start practice and this New Start movement. It's beyond their imagination because they don't realize this spark. Without the spark, you cannot explain. We call this miracle. It, you know, sometimes the doctors say you can live only for three months or six months. Those are just the those are just the statistical phenomenon without the spark. But once you get the spark in, then you are exceptional. You are exceptional from the statistical fact. If you're in the statistical information, if you if you want to be in the statistical information, statistical list, you know, you shouldn't be. That's abnormal. You should be normal from normal. Even though you're normal in abnormal, that is not good. You should be normal in normal range. Well, I'm 67 years old. Well, I live enough. So it's okay. It's okay for me to die. People sometimes say, well, I live enough. Come on, life cannot be calculated by years. What kind of will you have in you is more important. If you say you live enough, that is a wrong idea, which is spread it out in this world. Now, if you say, oh, my life without the spark was nothing, if you realize this, you're wonderful. If I live 70 years, that's enough, that's okay. If you say this, ah. Uh, that's very worthless. That kind of idea only goes through this world. But in the level of the truth, it doesn't get through. You need to have the truth in you. When you have the truth in you, your life is worthwhile. Now let's go back to the diabetes. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm out of the topics. I usually do that. ご飯食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら食べたら
you will have the solution, you will have the answer for diabetes. Now, for those diabetics, this glucose cannot get into the cell so that the cell cannot produce the energy. And the glucose gets does because doesn't because it doesn't get into the cell. They are outside of the cell and they have a lot of glucose in the bloodstream. The point, why can't this glucose get into the cell? Why can't the glucose get into the cell? No, scientists, of course, looked into it. No, those are the cell membrane. They studied on the process from uh, process for this glucose to get into the mitochondria. There, there was a door actually at the me cell membrane. When the door is open, the glucose, glucose can get in. And the door is closed, then the glucose couldn't get in. Now let's say there are 100 doors there. Now if those 100 doors are all opened, then those glucose in the bloodstream can get in, the mitochondria. But then those diabetes, diabetic, diabetic patients, the doors are not all open. Some of them are closed and some of them are open. So those glucose couldn't get into the cell. So that is diabetes. Then what happened to the doors? Why can't they be opened? Open. Now those are like elevators. Do you think it just happened spontaneously? I don't really understand evolution theory. You know, to do these kind of things, you know, it has to be designed. You know, mitochondria and everything, it should be designed carefully. You know, this creator knew everything. He knew the whole picture, and then he designed one by one specifically. I have no idea why the evolution, evolutionists assert those kind of nonsense theory. Inventor should have this certain idea. To function this system. I'm ashamed of myself because I believed in those evolution theory. Very irrational theory. Now see, there are doorbells there. There's a doorbell, and there is pancreas, and then from pancreas, insulin is produced from your pancreas. Now those insulin comes and rings the bell there. Now insulin is the key, and the doorbell is the lock. So insulin, the key, comes and opens the lock, then door is opened. That's how it is. Then, you know, inventor, this inventor should know all of this. Now, lock was made by itself, and then key is made by itself spontaneously. Lock itself by spontaneously, I mean. Then, do you think those keys can open those locks? 
if they're made separately? No, that's nonsense. Evolution theory is nonsense. Anyway, this key opens the lock and the door is supposed to be opened. So a long time ago, many people thought uh, diabetes, those patients cannot produce insulin from in their pancreas. That was the result when I was in medical school. So those diabetes patients have problems with their pancreas. But then it was false. It was wrong. Later, sometimes, you know, you know, we had like operation and we saw their pancreas. Those pancreas produce insulin quite actively. So later, production of insulin and diabetes have nothing to do with it. So juvenile diabetes, yes, their pancreas cannot produce insulin. Well, those juvenile diabetes is autoimmune disease. Those T cells come to T uh, pancreas, and those T cells selectively destroy those genes in pancreas not to produce insulin. So juvenile diabetes, they don't produce insulin. That's autoimmune disease. Yesterday, I talked about stem cells. You know, even in pancreas, they have stem cells, pancreatic stem cells. So even though those juvenile diabetes patients, even though their pancreas cannot produce insulin, they can produce insulin. You know, Dr. Huang, who tried to find out stem cell study, he failed though. But anyways, he was very into pancreatic stem cells. If he implants stem cells into pancreatic cells, and those stem cells will mature into pancreatic cells, and then those pancrea uh, pancreas can produce insulin. That theory actually has problems. Why? And people heard his theory, it's like, yeah, wonderful, we have to make these stem cells quickly. But when I listened to it, I was thinking, hmm, how come that is all? No, let's say you, you know, let's say he makes stem cells successively, successfully, and then he implanted these stem cells into juvenile diabetes patients' pancreas. Then what happened? The moment when these stem cells are plant implanted there, yes, maybe they might feel better. But several days later, you know, T cells, you know, he was like flowing around, and then he found these stem cells. Oh, what happened? Where did they come from? I killed them all, you know. You know, they don't think step by step. They should find the cause first. You know, Dr. Wang said, you know, I'm going to save our country. If I succeed in my study, I'm going to save my country. But actually, this treatment failed. Because he didn't recognize the cause. Very recently, very recently, you know, if you type Google, if you type Google, Google, and then type 
pancreas. P-A-N-C-R-E-A-S. Okay. Type pancreatic stem cell. Type this word in Google. Google site. And you will find some theory there. You will find some thesis there, and then you can read it. Even though you're juvenile diabetes, if you have juvenile diabetes, you will know that our Creator is already making the stem cells in pancreas. You don't have to implant those stem cells in your pancreas. Because pancreas itself can regenerate its stem cells. Because you practice new start, and then your T cells can decide, mm, I don't want to kill myself anymore. If T cells don't kill your pancreatic cells, then you know your juvenile diabetes will go away. Your pancreas will produce insulin. You know, while I was practicing these new starts, you know, I, s I saw many juvenile diabetes patients overcame their diabetes. You know, little, little kids, I saw many of them got better. Now he goes to university in America. His mother was a wonderful mother. You know, mother has great influence. You know, mother, when a mother is very shaky, then the baby is also very shaky. Okay, yeah. When mother is shaky, baby is shaky. Mother should be very brave. Mother should know the truth. Great men had great mothers. Mother took well care of those children. You know, girls or mothers sometimes, they're up and down so easily. Even though there are things that you can be very surprised or shocked at, but then you need to be balanced. And then sh children should learn from you. Children should learn from their mothers. Now you have cancer. Let's say, now after this new start practice, you know, after this practicing new start, now you become very strong. And you are not shaky anymore. Then your children will learn a lot from you. When you decide to hear the voice of life and you become very strong, and then your children will learn a lot from you. That is wonderful in heritage. I'll be like my mom. You know, your children will think, I'll be like my mom. I won't be shaky even though I get sick. You know, things like that. You know, your children, your grandchildren, you have to show who true ego is. Who this true ego is. Who are made from God. Now let's say you get a cancer, but through New Star you got better. And then your children will say, my mother won the victory. She's the winner. Now you're only 22 years old. Now you're learning you know, new star practice, you're so lucky. <laughs> Be a good mother, dear. You know, it happens. So, 
The doors are not open, so those glucose couldn't get into the cell. The reason why? Because the door doors weren't open. Now, as they looked closely to this lock, they saw something covered. So the key couldn't get in the lock. Sometimes locks are changed, so the keys are not really fit. You know, those kind of changes happen in diabetes. Of course, genes made those locks. So if the locks are changed, it means the genes are changed. So even though the keys come in, but then the locks don't work. Now, these locks we call insulin receptor. Now, those insulin receptor, those locks, there was a cover on top of the insulin receptor. Now, when they are not used to protect the insulin receptor, the covers are covered. Now, who don't need those? Who don't need those? Those who don't need to produce energy, who don't exercise. If they don't exercise, they don't have to make the energy. To produce energy, those glucose from the bloodstream should get into the cell. So, you know, those locks should be opened, you know, very often. But this person doesn't exercise. Then this door doesn't have to be opened. Then... They don't have to use these locks. And so to protect these locks, those cover is needed on top of the locks. Now this cover we call resistin. What does that mean, resist? Yes, against. In means insulin. Now, resistin doesn't receive insulin. Now, those who exercise properly, resistance is not produced in the body. But then those who don't exercise or those who don't need to make energy, resistance is produced. Now, if you want to overcome your diabetes, you have to get rid of that cover. You have to open that door. You know, those resistance has life span. If you exercise and if your cell needs to, wants to produce energy, then you know, those doors will be open. If the door is open, you don't need that resistance. So the number one cause is lacking exercise. Number one cause of diabetes is lacking exercise. And number two, high-fat diet. If you have high-fat diet, oxygen is not provided. Why? Because those red blood cells convey oxygens to your capillaries. If you have high-fat diet, oxygens cannot be delivered. Now, the reason is this. Now, these are the capillaries. You see those capillaries? Very fine, fine blood vessels. And they need to convey those oxygens through these capillaries. When your blood is very clean and good, those red blood cells, those are the capillaries. And those are the red cells. So red cells, because the blood is very clean, those one red cells, red blood cells, can pass through those capillaries. And that it can convey oxygen to the cell. Let's say you had pork, you had 
shrimp, you had ramen, then your bloodstream can be very slowed down. Blood can be very thick. Then those red blood cells, you know, stuck together, blood clots. And then it cannot really get through your capillaries. So it means you cannot really get provide, you cannot have oxygen a lot in the cell. So even though you have the spark, even though you have the glucose in the cell, but if you have no oxygen, you know, there is going to be no combustion. So lacking exercise, high fat diet, those two are the main reason for diabetes. When I was in medical school, when I was in medical school, we had uh, ramen for the first time. At the time, we couldn't have high fat diet. Even though we want to have uh, meat stew, very little portion of meat we could have. We could just smell the meat <laughs> in our soup. We couldn't even eat it. But when we see those, you know, oil on top of the soup, oh, we loved it. Why? Because at that time, back in old time, we we're very malnutrition. But these days, it's too much. That's why we have this kind of phenomena. You know, we drive these days. Back in old time, we always walk, always walk. So we had no possibilities to get diabetes. So back in old time, there was no diabetes. But now, you know, we eat, take a lot of meat. We have a lot of cars. So, you know, we can have diabetes, a lot of diabetes here. You know, we don't want to climb up the steps. We want to take the elevators all the time. See? So please, exercise. Don't take the elevators. Exercise. And then what's next? Lacking oxygen, lacking exercise, and then what's the problem? Yeah, the spark. Simple. Lacking the truth, the beauty, and the goodness. So what does that mean if you are lacking the spark? It means you're stressed. You have a lot of stress. So when you're stressed, when you're stressed, when you have a lot of stress, you know, your genes can be changed. So stress and the diabetes are directly connected. Now you understand what diabetes is? How can you overcome this diabetes? Now you know the cause. Then you need to get rid of these causes. Now this complication of diabetes can happen very often when you have a lot of stress and when you eat a lot of seasoned food because your density is already high because of the sugar, but then you put a lot of salt there, and then you put a lot of spicy food there, spicy seasoning there, then the density of the blood will really go up. So even though those chronic diabetes patients, even though they had diabetes for a long time, they don't have complication, it's because they exercise and they actually try not to eat salty food and things like that. So even though you have diabetes, you, you don't have to have complications all the time. But even though you didn't have complication, uh, you didn't have diabetes for a long time, but if you eat um, spicy food and if you like salty food and those who are stressed and overworked, then those people will have complications easily. 
Well, diabetes are not that dangerous if you don't have complications. You can level up your blood uh, glucose level. But if you practice new start, you know, proper environment, and if the spark is provided, those resistance, those cover will be will go away, and then you will overcome your diabetes 100%. When you practice New START, diabetes and hypertension patients uh, respond very quickly. When you come to New START, um, your blood pressure goes down quickly, and your blue glucose level goes down quickly. And when you listen to the lecture, you have this confidence and hope, and the spark comes in. So you, you have, and so you, you know, your blood glu glucose level goes up. So you have to uh, decrease your insulin injection. Well, even though you, your blood, glucose level goes down, it doesn't mean you overcame your diabetes. Well, let's say we have 100 doors there. If those, uh, among those 100 doors, if, uh, if 70 doors are closed, Okay, let's say you your 70 doors out of 100 doors are closed. Then, you know, let's say you're okay. Now, if you keep trying, if you keep practicing, you start all the doors. If the do all the doors are open, then you will overcome those diabetes. Now, one of the patients went to the hosp emergency hospital. He had diabetes, and then he had hope. Oh, my pancreas can be regenerated, and my my diabetes can get better. So the spark came in. See, he had hope. But then he got the same insulin injection. So he had hypoglycemia. So, you know, that's the kind of side effect of practicing New Start. That's a good sign, you know. You know, when you have high, when you are, when you have hypoglycemia, you know, you suffer a little, but it's not a bad news. That's a good news. So me Western medicine cannot imagine this kind of things. So this patient went to the hospital this morning. The doctor couldn't understand because the doctor doesn't know the spark. The doctor doesn't know the proper environment. If he knows these kind of things, you know, we can explain. But this doctor couldn't understand why these kind of things happen to this patient. Now, dear people, when you practice New Start, you are leveled up. You know those toy truck? Those toy truck is controlled by the remote control. You have to know this level. Those, those toy trucks don't move by themselves. Now, through New Start, through practice in New Start, now please, I really pray that you will succeed in your diabetes. Yeah. <laughs>
Allah. 